Hey game devs, recently I needed to generate a nav mesh that matched up with my terrain and I wanted it to just match with my terrain painting exactly like I've got here so that I could just take a little line, draw it in, and then have a nav mesh generated. I did come across a solution and it almost worked, but I wanted to show you what I had to do to change that solution and how to make it work in your own projects in this video. Now this process does take a long time, or at least a few minutes, but it works. And you can see that I've generated a nav mesh right here that shows my new area that's walkable. Now this is all created with this nav mesh generator script. It's going to make anything that's area ID zero, which is just defined up here in my paintable areas, this first index, walkable. And it'll mark it as walkable right here, this default area that I've marked or written in there. So if I want to generate, I can hit this button. I'm going to turn up my step size. So we did it at a step size of one. Let's go at a step size of three. This is going to make three by three meter objects. So let's watch you generate them. And I'm going to hit this break up. Oh, actually, maybe three by three is so fast. It'll go all the way through really quickly. Let's look at these objects here, though, underneath it. So it's got, actually, if I, I probably should break. It's going to delete them all out. But you see all these objects here. These are nav mesh modifier objects. And it's putting them all along the train and then generating a train. Let's do this one more time and we'll break through the process. So there we go. We just generate and I break and I look at the object here, this delete me. It's got all of these sub objects, this nav mesh modifier volume. And it's marking the areas as walkable. And that's again pulled from that script here. So let's take a look at the script and see how it works. Here's the nav mesh gen script, and you can see this is actually pulled from this GitHub page. You can see right here, nav mesh gen A, it looks like drugged hippo. It's the one that made it, and this version does things a little bit differently. It covers trees and does a couple other things and doesn't do a little pause in between so that you can actually visualize what's going on. All I've done is make a couple minor changes to make that happen. So if you want the code, I will link this one, the original, along with my modified version of the source code so you can go through it. But let's take a look at what it's actually doing. So inside of the nav mesh generator, it's got all of its fields, it's got a start method, and then here's the build method that we've got. Build kicks off a coroutine to generate the meshes. It's gonna find our terrain, it figures out the size of the terrain, and then it's going to create a child object for the delete me that it can start dropping the sub objects into for the nav mesh generation. Next, it's gonna figure out our layer and get the area. I don't think we even use that walkable area part there, but it goes through the splat map of the terrain data. It looks for areas where that alpha number or that where that number, the zero, is the highest value. And then it's going to generate an object in those spots. So if we scroll down just a little bit more, you see that it gets the value here at each position. So it loops through the X and Y, X and Z positions here, an X, and a Z loop, and we pause or do a way to frame every X loop. So it's every, um, every row or chunk of them instead of doing it for every single one. And then it figures out what the texture is there. If that texture is inside of our area IDs, then we mark it as walkable. Otherwise, we continue. So this is saying, hey, if the area, whatever we got there, isn't in that list, which has that value of zero that you saw, then continue on. And then we just check to make sure that there's, we haven't passed a time limit. This is something that they had in there already with a go to escape. I just left it there. Not my favorite, but it's OK. And then finally, we generate a cube at that position give it a nav mesh modifier volume and then at the end we do a bake so right down here at the end of it we call build nav mesh on all of the nav mesh surfaces i only have one though now that's the core of how it works i'll upload the code again so you can just go through it and check it out yourself and see it i feel like stepping through line by line of somebody else's code probably not going to be the most useful but just grabbing this code running it and using it should work pretty well Play with the step size, start with something bigger first and then scale it down. You get more finer detail as you scale it down, but it takes quite a bit longer, of course. And then I would uh, go with this break option or something so you can stop out and make sure that if it's taking too long, you increase this time limit. Now, one thing I wanted to ask real quick is if anybody knows a better way, because I guarantee there's got to be a better way to get this data and shove it into a nav mesh without having to do the bake and the build with the 
these objects, but I'm not sure what it is and I haven't been able to find it yet. So if anybody happens to know of it, please drop it in the comments and then I'll do a video showing how I improved the system and made it drastically better. And also if you're curious about what this is, it's just a MOBA that I've been building over the last week based off of the multiplayer mastery course. If you want to get the source code for the entire thing, just sign up for the course. I'm putting it all up there, not the art, but the, the full source code so you can go through it all and you'll understand it after going through the multiplayer mastery course and, and knowing how all of the kind of the core and the basis for the networking and everything is built. All right. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you have comments or questions, drop them down below. See you later. Bye.